and you'll see in a hot second here that the reactor is going to start <laughs> reacting to the battery that we placed inside. And the oh my god! What just happened? I'm gonna blow up? I. <sighs> Maybe that's why we shouldn't be messing with nuclear devices. Hey, what's going on guys? Log that zip here. Today we're gonna be building a nuclear reactor. Cause I know y'all love explosions. Aww. What do you mean you don't like explosions? Oh, I mean I guess if you're a guard, you probably have to guard from those sorts of things. In fact, that's what he's guarding. What you're seeing right there is a nuclear reactor capable of producing some of the most toxic and volatile, but quite useful. Spit all over my screen, by the way. Nuclear energy. Get out of my way, Roof. Nuclear energy. Yeah. And I'll be showing y'all how to build it today. And the best part, my friends, is you don't need any mods to get it. In fact, all of these machines that you see right here, furnace generator, disenchanter, item reformer, <laughs> Book and Quill. You don't even need a single mod to get any of these guys. It's part of the mechanization data pack, which is just a download that you drop into your folders. Not even a mod. It just takes everything that's currently in Minecraft and adds so many more crafting recipes, code, mechanics, and literally nukes, nuclear energy. It's beautiful. We're exploring all of it today in a somewhat of a part three. You don't need to see the first two parts to get what's going on today, but if you're curious in watching part one and part two of mechanization, there's probably some kind of video going off on the side right over here. You can probably click the eye in the corner somewhere over there and you'll get it going on. Uh, and of course, subscribe so you can see what we do with this nuclear energy. It's by I'm Cool Yeah. He's the guy that made all this stuff. So you want to check out his channel. It's also going to be linked in the description of this video. Without further ado, this guard will not be quiet. He's probably got something to say. All right, guard, what do you got for us? Welcome to the Mechanization Institute of Nuclear Research. You must be log.zip. Well, in fact, I am, Mr. God. The professor is waiting for you in the visitor center, just up ahead. Don't mind the landscape. The radiation is probably within safe levels. <laughs> probably. <laughs> All right, well, I'll go ahead and take your word for it. Uh, not too convincing, but, you know, I got to record this video one way or another. So let's head on inside to the Institute or the visitor center, whatever it's called. Subscribe. All right, let's stop. All right, so here we are inside beautiful looking futuristic nowhere near enough lighting and do you hear that buzzing do you hear that listen listen something's going on in here and i want to know what restricted area nuclear fuel research lab okay we got a battery pack here i recognize this from the last mechanization video so this battery is being powered by something. It's not hooked up to anything. We'll worry about it later. Let's make some uranium energy cells. Okay, don't mind if I do. Step one, uranium ore. This is an actual ore that you'll start to see spawning in your Minecraft worlds if you install this data pack. You can find it between Y equals one to 24. So it's kind of a rare ore. You gotta dig pretty deep for it. And what we have are some uranium ores right here because we're gonna go ahead and furnaceify them. It's a real word. This book here says that we're gonna need some uranium cells. In order to do this, we need to put uranium ore into the grinder to refine it. Here's an example of another thing. Magnetization adds a grinder machine. Put the ore inside, wait patiently, and listen to the sounds. You see, it's grinding. And then, behold, we have uranium ingots. We're going to let these continue to stack up in the grinder. Step two is right over here. It's going to show you how we're going to handle this uranium energy sale. Uranium rod and centrifuge. All these things together are going to make us what we need. So we got a book and quill here and a couple recipes as well. 12 uranium ingots alongside 24 glass in order to make a uranium cell. Now, I do want to remind you guys that even though these are recipes, you're going to need a special crafting table in order to make any of them. The machine crafting table. It enables crafting advanced machines. You see, it says it right there on the tooltip. And for sake of saving time, we're not going to craft most of the recipes. We're just going to craft this one so that you guys understand how it works. All of the rest crafting recipes I was gonna say all of these crafting recipes that you're seeing in this video use the machine crafting table unless otherwise noted so once you've made it like that you'll see that it turns into the depleted uranium cell 
And here's the recipe for the centrifuge, which is this guy right here. You need 16 red nether bricks, two hoppers, four conductive ingots, tier two machine frame, and dandelion yellow. We covered almost all of these recipes and how to make all of these items such as these ingots in previous videos. So like I said, the eye in the corner. Yeah. So we're gonna take our centrifuge, just place it down somewhere for sake of an example, and take our uranium cell, right click, and put it inside of the centrifuge. You see, you gotta stand right on top. And look at this, it's gonna begin spinning. You see, it's spinning. It's generating uranium centrifugal energy. So I don't know what I'm saying. Point is, you need this for nukes. It's even got the little nuke logo on the top, so you know it's gonna be a good time. Now we're gonna move on to the reactor construction lab. And by the way, if y'all want like real super overblown explanations of all this stuff, we tried to keep it nice and simple for the video. I mean, nuclear energy and reactors, it's always gonna be complex stuff. But if you want like full blown scientific, you can check out the description of the video. Check out I'm Cool Yes channel. They got full blown instructions on how to make this all work, including in game instructions on how to make it all work. So if you're not picking it up in this and you're just here for explosions, don't worry, we'll go, we'll go get to the explosions. Soon. So into the reactor construction lab we go. We're getting closer to whatever that electric sound is. I'm excited. Time to make a reactor and a steam turbine. These are the recipes for it. 16 steel ingots, eight black stained glass, a tier two machine frame, eight uranium ingots gets you a fission reactor, which produces power using nuclear fuels and a complex multiply. See, there we give you more info. See, there's a whole wiki on how all this works. It's extremely complex. Only the finest of nerds <laughs> know how to do it. Uh, look at this advancement at the top right. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Oh, that's reassuring. Jeez, messing with news, something's bound to happen. And of course we need a steam turbine, which converts steam into energy. You need for that 16 prismarine shards, four buckets, two prismarine crystals, a tier two machine frame, and four connected ingots. Okay, we got it all. Now we got a book to read as well. A lot of reading, knowledge is power. Y'all know what they say. Steam turbines capture steam created by the fission reactor and turns it into energy. That's right. That means we need to put steam turbines above the fission reactor because the fission reactor is going to give off a lot of heat because we're dealing with nuclear energy here. And we're gonna use that heat and that steam to cause the turbines to turn and turn the turbines turning into turns, turns. Uh. But we're gonna sort these suckers out in just a little bit, okay? We got some other things to do meanwhile. For now, we're gonna look at observers and a control rod. What you're seeing right here is a temperature measurer and we got a few other things we're gonna be making here. You need a whole bunch of steel ingots, count them, seven steel ingots, a clock, and an observer to make a reaction rate observer. It compares outputs reaction rates of the reaction within eight blocks. Y sure. The temperature observer does the exact same, except instead of recording outputs reaction rates, it records temperature reactors. So, and that's within eight blocks as well. And you need the same recipe, except magma cream instead. And then finally, eight steel ingots and one block of coal to get a control rod, which will slow the reaction rate when powered by redstone. You'll want to place this under your reactor. <laughs> Have I lost you guys yet? <laughs> I'm a little lost myself. Now remember, it's important that the control rod is underneath the fission reactor. If it's not, you have a high risk of explosion. And as much as we like explosions here on the Logzad Zip channel, we do not need the lab exploding. It's a very expensive lab. It's not even my lab. I don't want to be the one that blows it up, okay? So here's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna go ahead and place down this lovely reactor on this emerald block. And now that the centrifuge over here has been spinning for long enough, we should be able to extract, there it is, the uranium cell, whatever, 30% refined, which means it has been slowly refining over time. We're gonna go ahead and place this into the reactor to power it, look at this, in you go. And just like that, essentially you have now filled up your reactor, nice and green, and it's emitting an interesting sound. Now you'll notice since the reactor is now active, the redstone has just begun to turn on. And you can tell how strong it is by measuring the output of the temperature observer here, which means we've got only one of these redstone pieces has lit up for the time being. Now, we'll worry about this a little bit later. We got more to cover. Moving on, you can see right over here a Mark I prototype reactor. This uses a whole bunch of different block mechanics to keep this reactor nice and cool. You see, it's in water, it's got cooling blocks by it, it's got steam conductor blocks by it, it's even got the turbines ready to go. Now, what do all those things mean, cooling blocks, steam blocks, we'll explain to you in a hot second. As you can see right over here though, this thing is nice and temperature controlled, and you can instantly tell that the temperature is nice enough to keep this guy from blowing up, right? 
right? Uh huh. It's good stuff. Here we got some more uranium cells right here. Now check this out. We have a fully built reactor. You can see the seam turbine. Yeah, I just talked about that. Fill the reactor with a charged uranium cell and watch what happens. Oh, don't mind if I do. We're gonna fill it up after all. Up we go. Go ahead and place you right inside. You are now inside there, powering the battery. Can I even get, put another one in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. And you'll see in a hot second here that the reactor is going to start <laughs> reacting to the battery that we placed inside. And it's gonna cause, oh my gosh! What just happened? Did it explode? Oh, great. And I got hit with decay. I'm gonna blow up? Aye. There's my, all my items. <sighs> Maybe that's why we shouldn't be messing with nuclear devices. Oh, I know why. It's because I forgot to put the control rod down. Oh, rookie mistake. All the same, though, you can now see what the reactor looks like when it's done properly. Cool. Blocked off. Steam turbines are going. Look at it. You see the steam coming off from the water in here? It's causing these turbines to turn and continue to gather energy from within them. So, this is an example of the reactor done right. And as you can tell, the redstone is safely away from the control rod as well as the reactor itself. So we should not be seeing any explosions here. So what's up with the iron blocks and the lapis blocks and the coal blocks and everything else? Well, we're gonna explain that to you right now in the cryogenics lab. You see, check it out. Blocks will get heat from the reactor. So whenever you place a, a block around this reactor, the heat that the reactor is giving off gets transferred into the blocks. Any leftover heat gets sent to any adjacent blocks as well. These blocks will then create steam. Now, you have a five by five area in which this can happen. Outside the five by five, the heat will no longer transfer. Here's an example of a cooling unit or in this case, to have. Cooling units keep the reactor cool so it doesn't explode. Uh -huh. You can see this in the original reactor, AKA the one that we were just looking at right over there. And here are the different block types that are compatible with cooling. These are all exchanges. There's good heat transfer, a little bit of cooling. They don't make steam though, so you cannot use the steam turbine to get even more energy out of it. That's obsidian. Coal blocks, redstone blocks, and quartz. We've got the boilers, which are good steam production and okay heat transfer, but zero cooling at all. So this will not help your nuclear reactor from blowing up. We've got iron blocks, gold blocks, emerald blocks, and diamond blocks, basically all the main land ores. And of course, our coolers. Good cooling and steam production, no heat transfer whatsoever, which makes sense. It's a cooling block. Snow, lapis, ice, and packed ice, finally. A use for packed ice. Oh, I'm so excited. Of course, at any time, if you get confused or lost, like I'm sure you are, you've got your mechanical manual in game that goes through all of this information. Look at it all. You got, I mean, really, it just keeps going. There's so much stuff. These are all different pictures you can have. I mean, seriously. This is really well thought out, Icy, I like it. And believe it or not, my friends, you just learned how to make a nuclear reactor in Minecraft. So what this room is for right here is for us to build our very own. And it looks a little familiar. Remember this boy from the start? That's right. Time to power this smokestack. We gonna get it good. I need the power. I need the subscribe. I need to buy my shirts. It's Lincoln, Lincoln Bio. So I'm gonna try and build this thing from memory now that I've gone through the entire showcase area. We know right off the bat, we want a control rod placed down so that nothing can happen to us <laughs> and no explosions. So that's the probably the first thing that you'll wanna go down next. Now, obviously we would wanna put down the nuclear reactor right on top of that, but for now, I wanna start placing our lovely cooling blocks and etc. Since we need good heat transfer for the fission reactor at first, we wanna make sure that the closest blocks to the reactor are the good heat transfer blocks. In this case, we've got coal blocks. Magnificent. Then of course, we'll want a nice medium block to help facilitate that transfer even further. Let's go with, um, I'm thinking some blocks of emerald. Mmm, good stuff. Again, you wanna make sure that this is in a five by five area. So we have a little bit more room to continue to push all around. I'll do one right here too, yes, that's good. And then one right there as well, yeah, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And of course, let's finish off by placing down a whole bunch of ice. Four, five in this grate, four, five is great, it's good. Now I'm thinking, can we do another emerald on this guy, another emerald on that guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hey, we may as well keep going with it, right? Ice on all these sides, ice on all these sides. I know we got a little fun corner ones, let's do, 
Let's do lapis just on the corners. I think that that would look lovely. Now, the beautiful thing is they don't have to look exactly like the previous reactor. That's why we have so many different blocks that are compatible with this working. Now we've got our full-blown cooling system ready to go. We're going to go ahead and take some blocks that we've got. Oop, I did not mean to place that guy down. We're going to grab you real quick. Thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some stone bricks so that we can build around this and place down the water that we desperately need to add even more to the cooling system. So place blocks all around this guy. It's coming together. Our nuclear reactor is almost here. Okay, one more layer for good measure, and then we can go ahead and start placing the water inside. And it is update aquatic. This is the latest snapshots, 1.13. So, water's really fun to mess with. Check it out. Oh, we don't have it on this. I'm the worst guy. Okay, here we go. There's our water. Excellent. And there we go. Didn't mean to place that guy down. Not a big deal. You go right there. You go right there. Now you gonna help me? Really? You gonna... Really? Can we... Come on. Can we... Really? How much more water do I need? Ugh, the things I do. We need infinite water, of course. Two water bucks just wasn't gonna cut it. It's so annoying. Place a couple on the side here. And we are nice and good to go. I am now gonna go ahead and place in the actual reactor so that we can start generating some of this energy and we finish things off with our lovely steam turbine. So, place in the fission reactor. We could have technically placed the fission reactor in because we didn't have the uranium cell in there. I just can't say that word. <laughs> Alright, in you go. Right there. Control rod is like I want to try and play no control. There we go. Perfect. Put in the uranium cell. Just like that. It's good to go. We've started to generate power. Now we're gonna go ahead and place down our steam turbines as well. So don't mind me. I'm just getting the area nice and prepared. What did I do with all the steam turbines? We got them all right here. Steam turbines. Isn't that lovely? That's so good. Alright, all in the hot bar, ready to go. That is eight and nine for good. Oh, well, I didn't mean to, you know, okay, there we go. There's our nine. <laughs> so, steam turbines coming in hot. That's it. Two, three, four, five, six, and then, of course, seven, eight, nine. All of them primed and ready. We are generating so much energy right now. An unspeakable amount of nuclear energy is seething through this room. So, what do we use all the energy for? Well, it powers all of these machines. Tree feller, growth accelerator, electric furnace, solar panels, chunk loader, auto farm, lava fabricator? Yes, please. Where's our block break? I wanna make a block break. Here is our block breaker. We're gonna power this guy. We're gonna need to grab ourselves a battery as well. I want mm, a tier three battery. Sounds good. I'm looking for something a little stronger. Quantum battery, perfect, yeah. So all we have to do is place the battery and the machine nearby the nuclear reactor and we don't even need to do anything else. Like the, it's gonna start powering on its own. Look, this is instantly working. And so check this out. We've got a couple blocks right here. Let's place right in there, break, 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 etc., etc., etc. Nuclear power powering all of these amazing machines, which as you can see on screen right now, is something we've already done in part one and part two of mechanization. So, feast your eyes. You got a whole bunch of brand new machines to help automate your Minecraft world. This is a data pack courtesy of I'm cool, yeah. And yeah, you are cool. You better be if you got a nuclear reactor nearby or it's gonna blow up on you. If you enjoyed today's video, let me know, baby. Drop a like on it. Of course, subscribe and hit that bell to be notified of other Minecraft content. Oh. <laughs> Oops.